Good afternoon, Castille Landon. Welcome on VH Berries. Thank you. I am extremely grateful. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I am also doing very well because a brick is a type of construction material used to build walls, pavements and other elements in a masonry construction. And it is the perfect image for explaining your filmography because much like these 52 layers of red brick behind you. The Landon journey has been meticulously built. Oh, well, um, I'm actually not sitting in front of that wall today. I'm in a different room. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, but the metaphor always uh, stays uh, the same and I would love oh, to about the metaphorical wall of my career. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, Castile London, and I would love to start with one of the first brick and very important project of your journey called After We Fell. Can you tell us a little bit more about this feature film? Yeah, so After We Fell, okay. After we fell, after every, okay. Sometimes I get confused with them. Which one's number three and which one's number four? But you're right, number three is after we <laughs> fell. Um, <laughs> they have such similar names um, and it was so long ago now. Um, yeah, so that was the fourth feature that I directed, I think. Um, and it was really unexpected because um, up until that point, I had only ever done um, projects that I had written originally. Um, and that was the first adaptation I had done in terms of actually getting it to the screen. Um, so that was, you know, it, it's like a completely new experience being able to collaborate with um, the material and then also uh, taking a script that had been written by um, another writer and kind of adapting both of those things into a, a piece that I um, could relate to and, and felt, you know, I could put on screen. Um, and it was an amazing experience, you know, getting to work with those actors and getting to interact with that fandom because that movie those movies, the after movies, you know, there's so much more than just movies. They're, they mean so much to the fandom. Um, and it is, I mean, to me, it felt like being interactive with that fandom was just as important as making the movie. Um, cause it wasn't just about something that I was making for myself. It was something that I was making for them. Um, and I, I really, you know, felt kind of a, a duty with After We Fell and After Ever Happy to, to serve the fandom, um, which I think is, is what you're doing when you're adapting something that has such strong um, meaning to, to the fans. So um, <clears throat> all of that is a long-winded way of saying, you know, I feel really grateful for, for that opportunity because it feels like that kind of it was the thing that brought my career to a new level um, and also gave me a, a greater sense of confidence in myself as a director. Um, it was something that I, I, I went to Bulgaria and was doing completely by myself in the sense that like my team that I had been working with quite a bit um, prior to that I didn't have any of them. Every person that I worked with on that movie was brand new to me. Um, so it was, it was, uh, you know, a learning experience and um, it was just, it was great. It was 
a learning experience, Castie Landon. And as you just mentioned, you were serving your duty and making uh, those feature films. And uh, after we fell uh, for the audience and the story of this feature film is inspired and based on the book of the same name written by Anna René Todd. Can you tell us about the, this idea and this mission of adapting something based on some words? Yeah, I, I really love adapting because I, you know, writing is a very solitary endeavor. And I think filmmaking is a very collaborative endeavor. And so when you start with something, when you start with a text, you're automatically already in a more uh, like co-creative space. Um, it, it's there, it, it's easier because the ideas have already been vetted and usually you can go and find, you know, how the fans reacted to certain things and, um, possibly even improve or change little elements that um, maybe, you know, worked in the past, but didn't, don't work now or, or whatever. Like, I think that you're just, you're in more of a dialogue as a writer um, when you're adapting, which I really love. And I think, you know, Anna is so talented and such a lovely human that um, it was really nice to, to not just be in, um, in her kind of creative headspace reading the project, but also getting to collaborate with her on those two movies was, um, was really a treat. Furthermore, Casty Landon, for you, this movie was made a long time ago, but it is actually very recent because this, uh, chapter called After We Fell was actually uh, released in 2021 and there are actually very funny moments and elements that you brought uh, to the screen. For example, the teapot that is making a high-pitched <laughs> whistling sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to, I, I think that it's fun to kind of find areas where you can be creative with how you express um, emotional boiling points, for lack of a better word, or especially when it comes to the intimacy, like the fans don't want to, the books are quite explicit, um, but I think when you see something on screen, you have to be more careful about how you portray things. And so, you know, film is always about finding new and different ways to convey different emotions. And in that case, yeah, it was, it was getting steamy. So we used a teapot. <laughs> Absolutely, Castile Landon. And I also noticed this music called Can't Stop by Artist. Coucheron. And when we take a look at the last verse of that song, there are those lyrics. Why it's so blue, crushing into love with you, but now. And this idea and this adjective of the blue color is something that is very prominent, especially when we take a look at the color palette of this uh, movie with the ocean, the sky. Can you tell us a little bit more about those artistic choices? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's... Um, <laughs> honestly, the blue, the blues and the pinks are just a color palette that I really love and I think make uh, people look beautiful. So I always tend to gravitate towards um, blues and pinks. Um, but I think the the metaphorical, you know, like water as a metaphor is always something that I can't say always, but a lot of the time it comes in, right? Where it's like, here's a raining scene and now we're clearing the slate. So there's definitely elements of that subtly um, that kind of permeate um, those movies 
as with any movie, I guess, I, I kind of, you know, try to pay homage um, and also show things visually, you know, give little visual cues wherever you can as a filmmaker to kind of uh, lead the viewer into feeling what you're trying to get them to feel. Guiding the audience to what you want them to feel. And yeah. there is also this sense of humor. Castie Landon, because you made some very uh, subtle and implicit uh, connection with some of uh, big, to some uh, very important uh, references in literature. For example, a uh, one to Fitzwilliam Dorsey. Esquire, generally uh, referred to as uh, Mr. Dorsey, which is one of the two central characters uh, in Jane Austen, 1814, novel called Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's quite a few little literary um, nods. Um, it, I think it's pretty popular in YA, which is really great because it kind of, I think what's wonderful about that is you read a book and when the author references a, a classic book, um, it, it makes you go and read that too, or be curious about it too. And, um, I think, you know, as long as you're reading anything, like that's a good thing in my eyes. Um, but if you start getting curious and wanting to see the roots of, you know, the, these things that you love, um, if you're driven to those classic stories, then even better. So I think it's a real service, um, that writers do to, to include those kind of nods. It is a service that the writer are doing, uh, Castie Landon and, this film called uh, After We Fail definitely marks uh, the beginning of an area for you as a film director because you have been previously uh, directing other feature films but you were sometimes appearing on them and I feel that this is a new beginning. Can you tell us a little bit more about the beginning of that journey? Yeah, um, you mean in in moving from acting to directing and writing? Absolutely, Castile London. This idea of pivotating to acting. Yeah, from um, acting to directing. Yeah. Um, so the first movie I did was called Albion, and I. Um, I wrote that in order to act in it. And then um, the budget didn't allow us to hire a director. It was too expensive. So I ended up directing it. And I found myself constantly wanting to sit back and watch the monitors instead of get in front of the screen, in front of the camera. Um, and then, ugh, especially in the edit, I was like, oh gosh, I, it, it was really hard editing. Um, editing myself. So then the next movie, I just kind of had like a little cameo in that um, and decided basically after the first one, like I don't really want to pursue acting anymore. Um, I, I loved doing it, but I don't like editing myself. I don't like watching myself. Um, and I, I think there's a, there's a pretty major misconception when, when it comes to acting that like the job is, is acting and that that's not really the, the job. Like the, the job is actually all of the tears and sweat and waiting by the phone and, uh, you know, being in, in acting classes and, uh, auditioning, which is a very different skill than, than just acting. Um, and there's just so much that goes into it that is not acting. Um, and a lot of, I think, emotional labor, um, that I just wasn't 
willing to do. Um, I, I think it's, it, it takes a really strong person and I'm, I'm, I really admire people that are able to do it consistently and remain sane. Um, I think, you know, the, the kind of judgment and, um, and especially like, I think now there's a little bit more, um, willingness to accept people uh, who are are different than like the standard norm but um it's not perfect by any means but I think that when I was acting as a 15 year old female um which would have been you know 15 years ago there there was no room for people who looked different. Either you were like, you know, the leading lady and you had to look very, you know, there was one way for you to look, which was like stunningly beautiful and teeny tiny. And then there was like the funny friend. And that was all, you know, that was all there was. So when you're, you know, a young woman who's not particularly confident in herself, um, it just, it, it's, it really takes a toll on you. Um, and I think, you know, at least on, on the, on the flip side, now that there is more diversity, um, and acceptance and, and really a hunger for people that don't just look, you know, like picture perfect cookie cutter, um, person. Um, but now there's social media that goes along with it. So it's like, I don't know that it's any easier now, um, but yeah, I just like, it's a, it's a lot. So I, I, I'm glad to be, to, to be on this side of the camera for the most part now. Um, and, and being able to work with actors is something that I, I really love. And I feel like having that acting background makes me a much stronger director. Um, so I'm really grateful for the experience and I, because I can really empathize with them. Um, but I, I'm much happier doing this. Absolutely. Uh, Castie Landon, you're uh, happier being behind the camera, except for today. And I know. <laughs> for that feature film called Albion, the Enchanted Stallion. You couldn't afford to hire a director, so you did it yourself. And if I understood correctly, you didn't enjoy editing yourself, but you are enjoying editing horses. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can, <laughs> things with horses I can do all day long. That stuff's very fun. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about this very special relationship that you built with horses? Like in my real life or in, uh, in movies? In both, because I assume that for explaining the numerous horses in your uh, two previous feature film, it has to come from your personal life. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, I, I'm sitting in this room that has like horses all over the all over the place. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's actually it's as I'm thinking about it, it's kind of interesting. Like my passion as a young as a as a kid was horses. That's all I wanted to do. I never even thought about movies. Um, and then as I moved into doing movies. Um, like that became my obsession and I, we sold the horses so that I could move to Los Angeles and pursue acting and then directing and writing. And, um, and I didn't have horses in my life at all. Um, and then I wrote that movie and like, I, I just, it, 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 it helped me come back to the horses. Um, and after I did that movie, it was like, oh, that is just as much a passion of mine, if not even more so. Um, so it's, it's cool to me that like, it, it's kind of come full circle. And now I would love to do a movie with horses in it. 
Um, I also moved to, um, to Louisville, Kentucky so that I could ha have horses again. Um, and kind of was like willing to like right before, after I was kind of willing to give up the, the movie dream. Cause you know, it, it's, it's a roller coaster. Um, and then <laughs> just as I'm ready to, to give it up, that's when I got after. Um, and so I got to have my horses and my movies. Um, and I just travel for, for work, which works really, really well. It's like a dream come true to be able to, to have both. I guess the only thing better would be if I could do a movie that was like, a, like a sea biscuit kind of movie, like, oh, that would be amazing or like national velvet, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Casty Landon being an actor can be a roller coaster, but jumping fences riding a horse can also be a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> On top of that, uh, Casty Landon, you actually pushed your passion for horses very far. For example, you actually put a horse inside a car. Oh, the, the mini horse. <laughs> There yeah. is a scene in your feature film called Apple of My Eyes in which I can see a horse at the back seat of a car. Yeah, yeah, that was a fun one to do. Um, that's about a girl who loses her vision and, um, and gets a seeing eye pony. Um, and yeah, the pony goes everywhere with her. And that pony actually lives with my friend who is a horse trainer. Um, and she does go everywhere with her and she does ride in the car and she lives in the house, um, most of the time. And like, she climbs up on the couch, just like a dog. Like it's the cutest thing. It is the cutest, cutest. Okay. It <laughs> is the cutest uh, thing, uh, Casty Landon. And can you tell us? more about the behind the scenes directing that horse in this automobile. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like the horse was actually pretty easy to direct for the most part. I mean, especially because it's a little horse, like they, um, you know, actors you're always negotiating with, you're like, okay, I think you should do it this way and maybe try with this emotion. and you know, things can get really heady and like you're, you really have to dive into the why and where it all stems from. And you don't have any of that with an animal. You're just like, this is what I need you to do, you know, and to point them in the direction. And then usually they'll go roughly in the direction. And if they won't, it's, it's not even like, it's not a negotiation really. Cause it's just like, they won't do it. So you have to figure out a different way to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so in a weird way, it's like, there's not as much frustration because it just is what it is. You just accept it as opposed to, you know, sometimes you can get a little frustrated. I think, I think actors can get frustrated with directors and vice versa, um, on occasion when, when there are, you know, either differences of opinion or skill or whatever, or, you know, whatever it is. I feel like my ears like don't fit these for some reason, but so sorry. But, um, so yeah, I think, you know, working with, with animals is really fun. We had her, um, she learned that pony learned, um, over 150 tricks for that movie, which is pretty amazing. Um, and my friend who trained the pony for the movie actually then went on to train, um, the pig in pig with Nicolas Cage. And she trained, um, we have a scene with a, with a chicken in my latest movie, Summer Camp, and she trained the chicken to, to do a little cock-a-doodle-doo. Like, she can train any animal. This, she's just amazing. She, I feel like she's like a director of animals. Um, so that was really fun getting to work, you know, with her and then um, just with animals in general because I love them. You love those animals, uh, Casty Landon. And that first project called Albion the Enchanted Stallion is for me the cement of 
uh, this idea of building uh, this house with uh, those uh, 52 layers of red brick because it is your first experience and first time directing. Can you tell us a little bit more about the storyline of uh, Albiont and also about these very unique experiences? Yeah, so I'm going to try to remember because for some reason I just have no memory and this was like a decade ago, um, but it's about a, um, it's, and to be fair, I've done, I think eight movies in like 10 years. So they all kind of end up, I don't know, blurring together. Um, but we shot that in Bulgaria and it's about a young girl who, um, escapes to a mystical land and has to gather these um, four like totems in order to, I don't even know what she's doing now. As I'm, <laughs> I think she's trying to get home. I, I can't remember, um, but it, she does have to get these four totems and there is a horse involved um, <laughs> and I'm in it. So, and I directed and wrote it, so I should have a better memory for it. Um, but I do remember the experience of making it um, and the incredible cast we had, John Cleese and Deborah Messing and Daniel Sharman, who is hilarious, um, and Jennifer Morrison and all of these like really great people that I did not expect to be working with on my first movie. Um, and we filmed, like I said, we filmed most of it in Bulgaria and we shot a couple days in Florida and then a couple days in, um, in... <laughs> Minnesota. It was a really cold place. I think it's Minnesota. Um, and we shot under the ice. We brought a camera like into, there was like a frozen pond and we, not me, someone got into this, like, it's actually a sport people do. They like get into th these frozen pond lakes. Um, and then they had a camera then we, it was, it was great. It was really cool. Um, and visually, like I'm super proud of what we were able to accomplish on very little money. Um, and yeah, that's where I got the bug for, for directing. It, it, it was, you know, learning on the job. Like I did not go to college for, um, for film or for directing. I, um, I went for English for undergrad and then got my master's in creative writing. So I like storytelling was, um, was something that I was really familiar with, but in terms of, you know, making it visual, um, the visual rhetoric of film that all, you know, and even more so than the visual rhetoric, like running a film set, which is kind of like creating a little business um, and running a business, uh, <laughs> that was all brand new to me. Absolutely, Casty Landon, running a small moving business, exactly like an ice cream uh, shop uh, inside <laughs> a truck uh, that is uh, yeah. going from set uh, to set in Minnesota or in um, Bulgaria. And I am going to remind you the opening scene after uh, this shot of uh, horses. There is this radio section with someone saying good morning vermont it's the day mm -hmm. before christmas mm -hmm. yeah it's it's like kind of, i mean i guess we wanted to have it be kind of a christmas movie i don't know <laughs> there is this Christmas vibe, but also some very solid pieces of advice that are given by the character of the father, because he's telling that you just have to get out there, go after it. A rich life isn't about material wealth. It's from the inside, from your spirit. Wow, I was really profound back then. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that that's like, that's kind of, uh, I guess, like that was my goal setting. And, and it still is very much an ethos for me is like creating these characters, these female characters that have um, a sense of empowerment um, and a real drive to achieve something and, and not just like out external success, 
maybe that's part of it, but really like to achieve, um, the, the internal journey of like finding yourself, finding out your values, what matters to you, um, and kind of discovering that you're stronger than you thought you were. Um, I think that that's a message that especially then really resonated with me, but I think that really resonates with, um, or hopefully does, um, with everyone, but in particular women, like, I think it's just important to, to give messages, especially with that film, which it was a family film. It was intended for younger female audiences. Um, I felt like I really wanted to say to them, you know, you can do whatever it is that you intend to do. Um, and, and to really be passionate about that and just pursue it, you know, wholeheartedly. Um, so yeah, that, that was a nice little message for it. On one side, Castille Landon, there is um, Albion the Enchanted Stallion, a story, as we just uh, said, that is happening very close to Christmas during winter. And on the other side, there is an upcoming project probably happening in summer because it is called Summer Camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I just finished that movie right before the strike. Actually, we finished that. Um, thank goodness. And I um, locked picture on it pretty recently, a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, summer camp. It, and, and also the other side of the spectrum in terms of, you know, uh, Albion is a family film primarily uh, about and for younger female audiences. And summer camp is a um, broad comedy that is a dramedy maybe um, that is primarily about and for um an older audience of of women still but um it stars Kathy Bates and Diane Keaton and Alfre Woodard um Eugene Levy who is amazing um I mean they're all amazing they're all incredible Beverly D'Angelo like so many people that are just Josh Peck uh who else is in it like it's unbelievable the cast um and every day I was like oh, pinching myself because they're just so talented and wonderful um both in the movie and and just to work with in general um so I'm really excited about that one because it is quite a departure from the previous movies um and I, we had such a good time making it I, I guess I, I'm getting progressively older in my audiences um Although I think probably after that one, I'll, I'll, I don't think it's going to be all of that for, for the long term. I think that I'll probably go back to making uh, more romantic movies about people in their like 20s and 30s would be my guess. In conclusion, making and directing summer camp was an actual summer camp. Thank you very much, Castille Landon. I am looking forward to see that project. Oh, cool. Thank you.